Welcome again to uh, Worldwide Word Outreach Ministries Church. Again, I'm Pastor Delroy McCullough, and I am here with another Concerns of the Spirit. I uh, asked for a special request, and um, I got uh, several different subjects or topics, if you would, uh, that was asked to deal with concerning concerns of the spirit, things that bother people's spirit while in uh, uh, their Christian walk, people come across many different things that sometimes they don't really understand. And uh, sometimes they understand, but uh, they find it hard to accept. And so uh, I put out a feeler on some topics that might be of interest in our Concerns of the Spirit uh, uh, lessons and things that we put forth on Facebook and YouTube and hope that um, uh, we can get some, some questions answered. So as, once again, welcome and I hope that uh, you're blessed by these lessons. I'm going to try to slow down a little bit, but I'm going to try to keep it within the time frame so that uh, it won't be too long to listen to. And I'll try to get this lesson out. I have a feeling that this lesson is very important because I believe that a lot of people are going through this kind of thing and really don't know how to overcome it. And so, um, I've heard many times where people talk about uh, my calmness in the Lord or my calmness in my daily activities, how I don't uh, react too quickly to a lot of things. And I tell them about uh, my inner peace and how that I acquired it, you know. And uh, I wasn't always a peaceful person. I wasn't always quiet and... and uh, as calmly as some people think I am. But I praise God that I was able to reach a level where things that used to bother me don't no longer bother me and things that used to get me riled up and uh, get me upset no longer gets me upset. And I, I thank God for being able to get through a lot of those things. But believe me, the tests and the trials were many, were hard, and I made it through, and it helped increase my faith. So, the subject here may vary because concerns of the Spirit, uh, these days, uh, there are so many. So, even with dealing with uh, inner peace, uh, it, 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 it's based upon really the character of the individual and how that they handle things in their life. So there are a lot of people that wonder about inner peace and don't feel like they have it, but really they have it and don't even know it. And then there are those who are struggling to uh, convince a lot of people that they have it and they really don't. So you have to, you have to <clears throat> remember that uh, this may be based upon the character or the personality of the individual. Amen? Amen. So, how to find, how to have inner peace is our topic on the night. How do we have inner peace? So, Father God, we thank and praise you for coming uh, into this place on tonight. We thank you for uh, concerns of the Spirit. We thank you for Worldwide Word Outreach Ministries Church that is endeavoring to reach out to those souls and to help those to be lifted up that have not began their walk, those that have be begun their walk but are still sitting in the church benches and not doing much work. Worldwide Word Outreach Ministries Church is to reach out and help those step out in their calling to recognize their gifts and to begin to walk therein. And we thank you for that, Father God, for giving us a heart and a mind to go forth and to search out these people. Father God, we thank and praise you for the opportunity to be able to speak on subjects that are concerning the spirit. 
Oh, hallelujah. We thank you, Father God, for uh, your amazing grace and your mercy that you've shown upon many occasions uh, as you re let your spirit flow through this place and, and to touch each and every heart that watches this video. And we ask you to open their hearts, their mind, and understanding that they might receive a word from you on today. Father God, we thank and praise you right now. We come against anything that's not like you. We come against all that try to hinder. We come against all that try to uproot your word. Once it's been planted, Father God, we thank you. Because we claim it right now. It's already done. It's already done. In the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. We uh, uh, thank you for, uh, again, for taking the time out, as I said, to watch this video. And on Concerns of the Spirit tonight, we're going to be talking about keeping your inner peace. Our scripture setting is going to be found in Psalms 23. Amen? Psalms 23, right here. So, <clears throat> I want you to open your, your, your Bibles with me, if you would, to Psalms 23. And we're going to begin, we're going to begin reading so that uh, we can hear the gist of what we're going to be talking about. Where we find the confidence David's confidence in God's peace and his grace. Amen. Amen. So let us read Psalms 23. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in the path of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. For thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou prepareth the table before me in the presence of my enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil. My cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. And I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Amen. Here uh, in uh, Psalms 23, we find that uh, in our scripture, we read first that the Lord is our shepherd. And you shall not want. And this statement is the declaration of peace. To know who you are and who you belong to is the beginning of your inner peace. As David wrote these words, we know that David was on the run for King Saul. Because Saul wanted David dead. Now, there is a... Uh, 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 a large misunderstanding about uh, the, the things that went on with David uh, because of a lot of people that read and misunderstood uh, the readings of David and the situation between him and Saul. But we'll save that for another lesson. But my, my point I want to make is that David on the run uh, from an anointed man of God, Saul was anointed to be king of Israel. And uh, because Saul was anointed, David refused to touch one hair on Saul's head. He refused to do Saul any harm. And at many occasions, you read in the Bible where David had the opportunity and he didn't take it. So David begins to write here. And uh, we have to, you know, imagine in your mind that David is in a state of uh, loneliness. He's on the run and uh, Saul is trying to kill him and David had much love for Saul. And uh, here is a man whom he loved and now wants him dead. So David decides that 
he's going to turn to his one and only helper. And in the process of turning to his one and only helper, David wrote these words that we now, that we know that David was on the run from King Saul. But instead, David, thinking on all that had gone wrong, he chose to think on what God had promised. Now, this is, this is, this is uh, 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 something deep here. You have to think about what David is doing. David takes the time out to stop thinking about all his distress, all his hardships, and he starts thinking on God and God's promises and the provisions God would supply so that all would work out for the better. And David believed this and he trusted this. Therefore, David said, he maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside still waters. When we read that verse, we understand that David is talking about calmness and peace. And as, he, as, as David begins to write these words, you know, David is in a state of relaxation. But yet, here's a man after him. A man want to kill him. A man want him dead. But David says that David says that he maketh me to lie down in green pastures. That means he's comfortable. <laughs> that means he's comfortable. I know you out there today uh, think that you know I lay down, I'm comfortable, and I'm chilling, and I'm laid back, and I'm relaxed. But then, if you think about it and, and check yourself, you'll find that your mind is in turmoil. Your mind is not comfortable. So you may end up tossing and turning, trying to find new comfortable positions when it's not you or your bed or where you're laying. It's, it's not these things that are uncomfortable. It's your mind. And you have to quiet in your mind. And being able to quiet in your mind is what we're going to get to uh, uh, as finding your inner peace. Okay? So let's see how David found his inner peace by what he knew about God's promises and why he could trust them, okay? So, what did David know? David knew God by what he was taught as a young boy during the time he was a shepherd. And as we read the story of David, we find that David never left what he knew about being a shepherd. Even when he got grown, David still had the, the training of a shepherd in him, okay? So, you know, and, and, and what, what we learned during that time gave him faith to be able to stand against any enemy that came at him. So then King Saul was no different, except the one thing. Saul was God's anointed, and David respected that. And that was the only difference. So here is a situation where David had to approach it differently. So in our life today, we have to understand that, you know, we can find peace in situations, some situations we can walk away from. But some of these situations, we are forced into action by the situation or by whoever's involved in the situation. Sometimes we're forced into action. But it's what we think, where our mind works at, on how we handle that situation. Everything cannot be dealt with the same way, and we can still find peace in the same thing. We can still keep our peace in the midst of it. If we just learn to deal with it a little differently, there's a saying that's going across Facebook that says, don't make permanent decisions over tem temporary situations. And I like that statement because a lot of times we get worked up and we get in a rage, we say things that are going to cause long-term effects, and it's just a temporary situation, something that's going to blow over uh, before, you know, in the next 10 minutes, but here's tomorrow, because of your mouth, things are still going on. A lot of other things are still going on. Now you done made things worse. Or your action, you know, you might do something, you know, and, and, and walk out the door and mess up a situation or mess up something that can cause long-term effects. Uh, 
I've seen situations where people get extremely angry and jump behind the wheel of a car and peel out down the street. And then two, three blocks away, there's a serious accident. But, you know, now they're paying for a car that they tore up. You know, and it's going on and on. And the thing that got them in that car in the first place has settled, it's over. But they're still paying for the damage that was caused by that rage. So we need to think carefully. Okay? Because as a shepherd boy, David had many different kinds of attacks on not just himself, but on the sheep which he was responsible to care for. And so David here in Psalms 23 identifies his being a shepherd to the fact that he also needs a shepherd now to watch over him. So he like under Saul's attack, he's like a sheep. You know, he, I feel like a sheep. I can't do nothing. I can't touch him because he is a man of God. He is God's anointed. And I really believe and trust the word of God. And, and, and I know that we can't touch God's anointed. So I'm not going to touch Saul. So what am I going to do? What am I going to do? What am I going to do? So the best thing I can do is turn to my shepherd. Because now I'm a sheep. Now I'm helpless. And there's a wolf after me. And I have to be able to look to my shepherd. And, and, and so David quickly utters the words, The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. Okay? I shall not want. He says, The Lord is my shepherd. This was David's comfort, and today this must become our comfort as well. We must know that the Lord is our shepherd. Therefore, because the Lord is our shepherd, we shall not want, and the Lord is our provider. Just as David had to provide for his sheep, the, uh, he understood the Lord must provide for him as well. To continue in this kind of peace, we must first understand that it is our shepherd we must continue to look to. We must look to, and not just seeking the peace of the world. Uh, Romans 12 and 2 says we, you know, talks about how we are not to seek peace, the peace of the world, nor the, pros the uh, prosperity of the world. We are not to seek the peace of the world, nor the prosperity all our days forever. This is found in Deuteronomy 23 and 6. But on Romans 12 and 2, it talks about being not conformed to this world. So let, let, us, let, us read, let us read that quickly so that you can understand what Romans 12 and 2 is talking about and, and, and be able to hear it straight from the Word of God on what it means. Romans 12 and 2 reads, And be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, that ye may be that ye may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. And and God's will and God's will is very clear throughout the Word. So in or, in other words, we we have to turn loose the things of the world. We have to turn loose what's going on outside. You know our lives as far as our Christianity is concerned, our spiritualism is concerned, we have to remember that we can't always uh, 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 attend to those things. We're, we're spiritual and we're supposed to be spiritual minded. So we're supposed to turn loose the things of the world and we're supposed to lock on to uh, uh, the things of spiritual by transforming our mind, which means we have to recreate the way we think. We have to recreate the way we look at things. Now, the bottom line is trusting the Lord. Trusting the Lord is to handle everything. Uh, uh, to handle everything is hard. And I'm sure a lot of people say, oh my goodness, I am. some things I can't, you know, I can't just turn over and just walk around like it don't need, you know, like it don't need some kind of action. Well, 
if you trust the Lord, yes, you do. And uh, you know, I, some people will say, oh, that's easier said than done. It is. It truly is. It's easier said than done. But we have to transform. That's a continuation word. That means an action word. That means we have to continue to work at it until we've mastered it. And once we've mastered it, only then can we really lock on to a transformed mind. So it, 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 it will start out hard. I guarantee you, this is not an overnight thing on getting your inner peace and, and holding on to your inner peace. It's not an overnight thing. So don't give up. Don't get discouraged because uh, you might fail once or twice. Continue, continue, continue to go. Okay? Now, here we have... Here we have... Uh, where it says, but those, but for those who seek to be more spiritual, it is a must. Before we end our day, we must know how to end it. And how do we do that? Psalms 4, uh, Psalms 4, 8 says, I will both lay me down in peace and sleep. For thou, Lord, only maketh me dwell in safety. You have to, you have to, see, you understand what that means, you know. You don't just lay down in peace. You have to both lay down and sleep in peace. That means your mind has to be clear. And the only way to do that is knowing that God is your safety. You're safe in God. You have to accept that. You have to trust that. You're safe in God. Because ain't nothing coming on you that God don't know about, and ain't nothing coming on you that God, you know, is, is, is saying won't happen. God said, I don't want that on them. Trust me, it ain't coming on you. It will only come on you if God allowed it to come on you. And if God allowed it to come on you, that's because there's a purpose in it. And the Bible says all things work together for good to them that love the Lord. So if it's working together for your good, if you love the Lord, it is working together for your good. You can trust that. David did. Okay, so just because David did, that don't mean I can't. Okay, well, David didn't immediately do it either. David had to grow into that, and so do you. Okay? Those who are troubled during, uh, you know, uh, uh, those who are troubled during the day and during the night are not at peace. Therefore, have no trust for the Lord. Trust in God is the most important start in peace, in your inner peace and your outer peace. You have first have to get your outer peace going on before your inner peace can kick in. So that when, when you got all kinds of chaos going on around you, all, and everything's happening and blowing up and things are falling and, and things are breaking and, and things is coming in the mail ain't right, folks acting crazy on the job, things is going all up and down and you don't know which way to turn and you don't know whether you're going or coming and carrying on. But in your mind, there's a quiet. There's a peace and people looking at you going like, Psh. All this stuff going on, and they ain't even, they ain't even blinked. <laughs> they ain't even blinked. What's up? Okay? Notice, those who have no peace are earthy or worldly kind of people. They're like those that have no peace are easy to trouble, easy to anger, easy to upset. <coughs> Their response to many things are dramatic responses to everyone. And about everything, very few smiles, very few likes that are going on around them. To maintain inner peace, the Bible teaches that we must seek peace, process, progress. And then once we, once we, once we learn to grip onto that peace, then we have to pursue peace. Psalms 34 and 14 tells us, pursue it. 1 Peter 3 and 11 tells us to seek it and pursue it. But we have to, we have to back up in order to understand the how. Watch verse 1 of the same chapter. 
I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. I will bless the Lord at all times, and his praise shall continually be in my mouth. I wish, you know, that you were sitting here uh, and, 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 you know, I could hear your feedback and uh, get some pointers because in some of these, like I said, are based upon personality and characteristics where different people have to apply differently in their life, but the same solution they have to apply to have the same effect. No matter what your personality is, the solution is still the same. And you'll get the same effect. But how, you know, uh, uh, how you grow, how you grow and how you uh, advance in it is according to your personality and your character on how, how, how much you want to seek, how much you want to pursue, how, how, how willing is your heart to go after God. Because therein is your peace. To maintain inner peace, the Bible says, seek it. peace then pursue peace. And you pursue peace by I will bless the Lord at all times and his praise shall continue to be in my mouth. That means every time I open my mouth, I got praise for God. Every time I, every time I hear something, I'm praising God. Every time something happens around me, I'm praising God. Every time my mind goes somewhere, I'm praising God. My heart is always praising. My head can go crazy all at once, but my heart's going to keep on praising until I lock on and hold on to that peace because I'm pursuing it. I'm pursuing it. Things will happen to you. Things will go wrong. But hold on to your peace no matter what. Stay calm. Stay at peace. What a declaration. This is, this, this is, a, this is a mighty declaration here. <laughs> when we set our minds to bless the Lord at all times, we begin to see that all day, every day, and everything we do and say, we are to keep our minds stayed on the Lord. Jesus told his disciples that he would give them his peace. Not the peace of the world, no peace, but his peace. And when we watch the lives of those disciples, we will notice that they continue in the Lord day and night. When we read in Acts 2, we learn that on the day of Pentecost, they were in the upper room, and they were all on one accord, continuing. As, 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 the, as I said, they continued. Continuing in the word, and in praying, and in praise. And this is when they heard the rushing mighty wind that filled all the room where they were. When we continue in the Lord, all day we can't expect things to happen. When we keep our minds stayed on God, we can speak things into the atmosphere, and things will happen. And this is what grows, this is what strengthens your faith. When your faith is strengthened by something like that, it's because you know that you know that you know that you know. And can't nobody tell you no different because you've seen it, you, you felt it, you heard it, and, and, and you know it. You've learned it. And we're going to get to that part too. David knew the Lord was with him. When David, when, when he had, when he had killed a lion, David became more sure. Then he killed the bear. Then he, his faith was that, grew that much more. But one day David picked up five stones and found he only needed one. <laughs> I like that story. That's why I giggle, but you know, that's why I laugh. But I like that story. He picked up five stones and only needed one. Five, grace. One, Jesus is that rock. Hallelujah. Jesus is my rock. Hallelujah. I thank God for the rock. And uh, David's, David, in David, a faith that says, watch this, back in Psalms 23, watch this, he restoreth my soul, Lord have mercy. He lead, leadeth me beside the path of righteousness for his name's sake. You know, you had to been there, really, because David stands before a giant, and he takes a rock and bring him down. Now, David knew that God had to step in if he wanted his glory in what was happening. He, David, David knew God. You know, it's just like being on uh, uh, 
uh, TV, you know, it's a show, or at the movie theater, a show has to bring in a certain amount of audience. A show, a star in that show, the star in that show has to be able to bring in a certain amount of people to, to, for that movie to make any money. And so the star has to be able to produce a certain amount of share on that movie. And so God, David knew God <laughs> had to show up <laughs> as the star of the show in order to bring that share in that needs to be in. That He needed to bring that review up, huh? In order to get his glory. And if, and, and if David stepped out there in front of this giant with nothing but a rock and a sling in his hand and trusting God to show up, that's faith. But his faith was in the confidence that he knew that God, he was trying to give God the glory, and God could not afford not to show up. Hello? Hallelujah. We, he knew God could not afford to not show up. So David went out there putting God stakes on the, on, on, at, at, at play. And here's this giant who wants to uh, uh, degrade God, talk about God and the children of God and the Israelites. And he's out there blaspheming and carrying on. And, and David says, <laughs> and David stood with, with, in, in this David stood where he could cause God to move by simply trusting him. And this brings the great peace David spoke about in Psalms. Great peace have they which love thy law, and nothing shall offend them. Jesus turned around and said, Love the Lord with all your heart, mind, body, and soul, and your neighbor as yourself. On these two hang all the law. For against such there is no law. For against such there is no law. Because when we love others as ourselves, how then can we, well, how then can they offend us? We know from where offense come. The Bible says that we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, powers, and rulers of darkness in high places. Hello. So if we have this knowledge in us, we then know that we don't worry about the person that's standing in front of us, but in that person or around that person is a spiritual war going on that came into your surroundings because that person has that going on in them. You ever walked in the house and as you got in, it felt like everything went quiet and everybody was looking at you and you felt really uncomfortable and you felt like something wasn't right in there before you got in there and everybody's quiet looking at you and everything and, and you, you know, you might say a few words and then you want to get out of there. You ready to go because your spirit is uncomfortable in there. That's because there was an unclean spirit in there. There was something going on that wasn't right. And you felt that when you walked in the door. That's called discernment. And when you discern that, they were either, uh, you know, they were either doing something that they are uncomfortable doing around you. And if you are a child of God, that meant they were up to no good. Or they were probably was arguing amongst one another and it was a personal argument and they didn't want you to hear it. So they went quiet. And so your spirit felt this spirit in the place. And that's why you felt the need to hurry up and leave. You was ready to get out of there. But, you know, the Bible said that we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, powers, and rulers in high places. For against such that, you know, uh, 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 we have to remember that we, you know, we can't be offended by that person. Offense comes from the enemy of your soul. Keeping you in stressful situations is the way the devil keeps your mind off Jesus. Come on now. Notice how Jesus tried to make the plan, make this plane with Peter while walking on the water. Peter took his eyes off of Jesus and failed. He sunk. Paying attention to the things around you will often take your mind off of Jesus. These are worldly things, mostly always worldly things that take your mind off of Jesus. Spiritual things will put your mind on Jesus. This brings us to being focused, keeping focused, knowing where to look, 
and keeping your eyes there. I am for peace, but when I speak, they are for war. This is Psalms 120, uh, verse 7. And the Lord says, I am for peace, but when I speak, they are for war. This is how you notice. This is how you stay focused and pay attention to what's going on. If they're, if they're not of God, then they're about warring type things. They're about drama, you know, and stress, and you know, all that kind of stuff kicking up. They, they look like they love it. They're always trying to keep it going on. And, and if you pay attention to what they're kicking up the drama about, it's something probably this small. And it really ain't that big a deal. And it ain't worth all the drama that they're kicking up about it. You'll, you'll, you'll find that out. Pay attention. It's not really worth it. And so if you don't pay attention, they can, you know, pull you into it. But the Bible teaches us that God is not the author of confusion, but of peace and a sound mind. So whenever people take you out of your, out of your comfort zone, out of your peace and your sound mind, no, that's not of God because they're trying to make war. Just like it says in, in, in Psalms 120, verse 7. The Lord says he is for peace. So all we have to do is pay attention to what is coming at us. Pay attention. It is peace or it is war. Drama, stress, cursings, knowing these things, for they, that for they are not of God and have no place in us because they have no place in him. Huh? For God is not the author of confusion, but of peace and a sound mind. When we stop and take a good look at what this is saying, we can't help but to think on the scripture that reads as such. And the peace of God, which passes all understanding, shall keep your hearts and minds through Jesus Christ. Shall keep you through uh, uh, hearts and minds through Jesus Christ. Keep your mind stayed. Focused. Keep your mind focused. And, and pay attention to what's going on around you. And notice, even some situations, or, or let's say, let's just go far as to boldly say, some people you have to cut off. You don't have to stop loving them. I'm not saying that. No, 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 no. I'm saying you have to cut them out of your life and love them from afar. You see them? How you doing? See you later. <laughs> you know, you're carrying around no animosities and attitudes and, and all that kind of stuff because that builds up in you too and steals your peace. So let it go. Get your peace. Love them and say, you know, I'll have to go. I have to talk. I got to go over here. You stay over there. <laughs> okay, so... Keeping yourselves out of the drama, keeping yourself on the outside of the drama. And the more you keep yourself out on the outside of the drama, this is what I guarantee you. You'll see more. You'll discern more. Your discernment will kick in and you will spot them coming. Because every time they come, they're coming with the drama. They never come with peace. They're coming with drama. You watch on uh, uh, Facebook. Those people that don't like the word of God, they don't like Christians, they don't like church stuff, they don't like none of that stuff, how fast they will get an attitude, how fast they will either call you out your name, start cursing at you, and telling you that the Bible's a myth, or we Christians are stupid for believing fairy tales, and all that kind of stuff. They get frustrated, extremely, because they want to pull you into their drama. And they want to keep you on that edge. When you find that you have peace and they don't, the matter they get. Watch them. I guarantee it. Watch them. Keep your mind, keep your mind focused. Stay focused. And once you learn to stay focused, then we can answer the question of how to find that inner peace and keep it. How to hold on to it. How do we hold on to it? We know what not to do now. We know the things to watch out for. Drama, stress, you know. Arguing, curses, you know, cursings, and, and people that want to fuss and, you know, complain all the time. They always want, they debate everything you say, everything. So we watch out for these things. Keep our minds stayed on Jesus Christ and keep focused. Keep ourselves focused. And we have to train ourselves to do that. And that comes through fasting and praying. 
Well, the more you fast and the more you pray, the more you're training yourself to stay focused. So that's one of the benefits of fasting. It trains you to stay focused. Amen? Amen. Okay. So let's look at Philippians 4, 8 through 9 and look at what it says. I know a lot of people that heard me quote this scripture. They know it's my favorite because it's where I get my peace from. It's how I stay in peace. So the Bible says, finally, brother, whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are honest, whatsoever things are just, whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are lovely, whatsoever things are a good report, if there be any virtue and if there be any praise, think on these things, those things which ye have both learned and received and heard and seen in me do, and God of peace shall be with you. Notice what he said. Those things which you have learned, received, heard, and seen. These are the trigger key. These are the key triggers because you've learned them. You've learned how they are by watching them. You've learned how they are. And you've seen what they've done and how they do, how they bring in stress and, and, and drama. You've seen all this. And, and, and you, you, you don't, just, you don't just, just relax on what you heard and seen because you can take what you heard and seen or, or you can take what you've learned and seen and go by what you heard also. Because most of the time you was warned before you even got connected with that person. They full of drama. <laughs> Somebody done told you. But the bottom line is you did not believe it because you probably have a trusting heart and you probably have a big heart and you probably, you know, quickly give a person a chance. This is what most Christians do and it's a good thing. It's a good thing to have a big heart like that. But sometimes, you know, we hurt and then we compare to what we've seen huh? and what we've learned about that person. Huh? And, with, and the things that we receive from that person. We're always receiving drama, 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 drama. That's all we ever get from them. We've heard people tell you every time they come over there or they come around us, they bring in drama with them. Seek peace. Whatsoever things are true. Whatsoever things are true. Whatsoever things are honest. Whatsoever things are just. Whatsoever things are pure. Whatsoever things are lovely. Whatsoever things are of good report. If there be any virtue and if there be any praise, eliminate everything else because nothing else matters in your life as a Christian, believe it or not. Nothing else matters. And this is a good map. It's a good map, and it's a good uh, guide to follow. So when you follow that, you can't go wrong. But Paul said that God of peace shall be with you. He will be with you. And in that, you will have your peace. If we continue in, in this walk, we are sure to find peace. This is what David found when running from Saul. He found peace because he was determined to have peace within himself and within his walls. Huh? Peace within, peace be within thy walls and prosperity within thy palace. Psalms 122 and 7. Jesus spoke about how they have inner peace by saying, salt is good, but if the salt have lost its saltness, wherewith will ye season it? Have, have salt in yourself and the peace one with another. Mark 9, 50. What Jesus is saying here is about patience. <laughs> oh, you didn't hear that word in there, though, did you? But Jesus is talking about patience. Salt is a preservative. It slows down the natural aging of the thing which you put it on. And it adds flavor also to it. Therefore, as salt, we must learn patience and love. For the flavoring, that's the love part. <laughs> love is good. It tastes good. And, and, and the salt is a preservative. It preserves. It slows down the natural aging process of whatever it's on. And that's, what, that's one of the purpose, main purposes of salt. So what God is saying is patience. We can't be just, you know, just kicking folks out of our life and stuff like that. We're going to find ourselves with nobody around. 
So we got to be able to be patient with people. We got to be patient with them because we are the salt of the world. Amen. We are the salt of the world. And so being the salt of the world, <clears throat> we have to be the preservatives of the world. Because once the salt is taken out of a thing, it begins to decay. It begins to age. And if the salt of the world is taken out of the world, the, the world, it, it, it becomes unsalted. It's good for nothing. Hello. So as long as the church is still here, the church is preserving this earth. And that's a, that's a revelation lesson, so we, we're going to hold off on that. But still, uh, understand what salt is all about. It's a preservative. It slows down the natural aging of a thing, which you put it in as well as adding flavor to it. Therefore, as salt, we must learn patience and love, meaning this. When we continue in patience, we give others the grace which God gave us. When we look at someone, we are to know that we... Two were once where they are. Delivered as we are, nor are they on the same level as we are. So when love, with love, we preserve them until they can be re until they can reach our level, until they come up here where we are. And once they reach our level, you know, this is the salt. This is what salt does. And in this we find peace with one another. And this reinforces the peace within, our, within us. Because Paul, talks, Paul said, the, the, you know, ye are my joy. You know, to say or, or, or to guide someone to, to the Lord, that's a joy. That you, even, even when somebody can say, all of heaven rejoices. Over one soul being saved. So Paul is saying that, you know, you are my joy because they were all people that got saved under Paul. And Paul told them that they, that they was his, they was his joy. So there is joy when you are patient enough to bring somebody up to your level that, you know, you brought in to the faith and you watch them grow. That is such a joy. You, you don't know the rewards of that. To see the face of someone who came out of drug abuse, alcoholism, and uh, uh, all kinds of sinful acts on the street or something. A self-destructive life, you know. And then they turn their life over to Christ. That's a joy. Lord knows. And when somebody come along and try to fight it and say that Christians ain't this and Christians ain't that. The Bible's myth and the Bible's that. And they try to destroy that. They didn't care nothing about your soul. Because that book saved your soul and got you off them streets out there. And here they is trying to destroy what's in you and send you back to church. Don't tell me that ain't, no, that ain't the devil in operation. Keep your peace. Don't let people take away the seed that's been planted in you. Because, you know, uh, when, the, when the seed is planted, there always one somebody waiting to pluck that seed up. So before we end the lesson, for now, which is a long one, I know, I know, but uh, I, I try and hurry up through it and try to get to the basis of uh, your inner faith and, and let you know, give you a starting point, a starting place where to start to get your inner peace. People hold on to your inner peace. Get, start working for your inner peace. If you are really looking to have inner peace, the lesson cannot end. With this scripture, it cannot end without this one scripture uh, uh, to think on and to remember. Here is one. I want you to remember this scripture. <laughs> there is one alone, and there is not a second. Yea, he has neither child nor brother, yet, yet is there no end in all his labor. Neither is his eye satisfied with riches. Neither said he, for whom do I labor? And bereave my soul of good. This is also vanity. Yea, it is a sore travail. Two are better than one. Because they have a good reward for their labor. For if they fall, then one will lift up his fellow. But woe to him that is alone when he felleth. For he has not another to help him up. It, it, Ecclesiastes 4, 8 through 10. In other words, what this scripture is talking about is a spiritual partner, companion, someone you trust, someone that you can sit down and talk with. You can uh, uh, unload 
a lot of stress for things that build up in you. Because at no time, think that you can keep your inner peace by keeping junk powder on top of it. You got to release that. You got to release that. So you have to have somebody that you can sit and talk to. You got to have somebody that will listen to you while you rave and go all off the deep end and then lock back onto your lock back onto your peace. But you got to get it out. If someone knocks on your door and sets you into a rage and you go, oh, okay, thank you, uh, you know, and and you say, okay, well, bye. I'll have to talk to you later. I have to go. And they run a rage, and you shut your door, and they leave, and you all, I can't, I can't believe they went off on me like that. I can't believe they said that. I can't believe they cussed at me like that. And you in a rage, you in a rage, and you need to get that out. And you grab up the phone, and you call somebody. Honey, I ain't got time to listen to all that mess you're talking about. Well, you have to have you somebody that will listen, because you have to unload. And you have to be there for them to unload too. And you have to be able to trust one another and unload between one another and it gets no further than that. Because if you have a spiritual partner and you have a spiritual companion that you can unload with, you can always turn to that person in your rage and know, this is my partner. They didn't have nothing to do with what just happened. You can hug and you can kiss. Shake hands. See you later. Thank you for listening. I sure appreciate it. I feel a lot better. And when you step out your door the next day, you step out in your peace. And the person looking at you going like, ah, but they ain't going to do nothing about what I had said. No, I'm going to do nothing about what you just said. I love you. Love you. <laughs> love you. Not with a sarcastic smile, but with a smile of love. Because you are the salt. And you got to remember, you got to preserve that soul too. Because that is a soul. And God wants that soul. For it's not the Father's will that should any should perish. You know, John 3.17 says, God sent not his son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world might be saved through him. So uh, God wants the world to be saved. That's the will of God. I see, I've heard a lot of people uh, uh, quote different things about what God's will is, but God's will is that the world be saved. That's God's true will. Through all means, save the world. Get the world saved. So finally, brother, we're going to bid you farewell. Be perfect. Be of good comfort. Be of one mind. Live in peace. The God of love and peace shall be with you all. So have a blessed day. We thank you for listening. We, we, we appreciate all of your comments. We appreciate y'all your opinions, and uh, even those that just click the like button, even those that listen but didn't click or say nothing, I know you're out there watching, <laughs> and I appreciate you. I really did. And so I want to thank you for, for taking the time to watch. So, Father God, we thank and praise you for what has gone forth. We thank and praise you for your word on tonight. We thank and praise you for uh, touching each and every heart. Bless them, Lord. Bless them. Increase them, my Father God, that they might feel the anointing, Father God, and also reach into them and help them find their inner peace. Help them be able to look to you and trust. Let them know that your grace is sufficient. Your grace is sufficient. Father God, we thank and praise you for all that you've done, all that you're doing, and all that you're going to do. We thank you in advance. And we give your name all the honor, praise, and glory in the mighty name of Jesus. We'll see you next week for Concern of the Spirit from Worldwide Word Outreach Ministry Church. I'll see you then.